Hi everyone. Now in the last video, we actually talked about the crude oil's API value or the heaviness and lightness of the crude and we explored the crude oil's essay and we know it contains lots of information. Now if you actually checked out ExxonMobil's essays or any crude oil essay, yeah, you know there are lots and lots of information. So the information I want to specifically talk about today is those with re relation or those that are relevant to the impurities in crude oil. Now why are they important? Why is knowing yeah, the percentage of impurities important? First, first of all, we know we have certain product specifications to meet, right? Certain product specification, like you can't have too much sulfur or nitrogen because burning oil rich in these of with too much sulfur or nitrogen can produce this sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide or oxides of nitrogen this can form acid rain, so it's an environmental specification environmental spec I'll just leave it as that now what's the other reason um, that you have to know the amount of impurities? Well, we know that if we put a very impure oil through an engine, oil through an engine, or some kind of machine, any kind of machine with impurities, it can cause damage and corrosion. Likewise, the refinery is also a machine or engine which processes the oil. And the, if the oil is too impure, then the refinery will have to think of ways that or re refinery must be designed in such a way that it can handle these impurities without being damaged. So what are the kind of impurities that can damage a refinery or reduce its efficiency? Yep. So you can then what kind of uh, impurities are we talking about? Well, in your crude oil assay, crude oil assay, you can see the salt content in there, and we can see all these uh, sulfur and nitrogen. That that actually are some of the impurities, but salt especially. I'm talking about table salt, sodium chloride. Salt can actually react with water to form HCl. This is hydrochloric acid. Now, of course, you know too much of that will eat through the metals of your refinery and then you have leaks. And the other thing that can cause corrosion is vanadium. Vanadium. This is a metal. And I won't talk about why or the chemistry behind it, but you, you don't want too much of these metals inside your refinery or in your engine because it'll cause corrosion and reduce efficiency. So for stuff like that, you want to check your oil very well. So sulfur and nitrogen we know is for environment. This will cause corrosion. And you even got to know like how much acid there is in your crude oil. Total acid number. So how much acid in your crude oil? If there's acid in your crude oil already, you don't need salt to actually start the corrosion process. The acid inside the crude oil is enough to start corroding your refinery or your car or something. But the refinery, yes, in specifically the refinery. So total acid number is used as a measure of how acidic the crude oil is without the salt. So this will measure and by definition the total acid number is how many mg milligrams of potassium hydroxide this is an alkali are needed to neutralize acids neutralize the pH or acids 
in one gram of oil. Okay. And yeah, that's another reason why metals are important to know. Because you not just have vanadium inside your crude oil, there'll be nickel as well. Sometimes there's copper or even calcium. So the ExxonMobil assay, whoa, excuse me, nearly dropped the camera. So the ExxonMobil assay will actually contain information with regards to these three metals. And why, why is knowing that important besides corrosion? Well, in the refinery, there are going to be chemical reactions. Chemical reactions. I'm just writing short, writing that in short. So what, what are the chemical reactions for? Well, you know when we send the crude oil to the distillation column, we get the light stuff and the heavy stuff. Like uh, the long residue or short residue. We want to convert all these into the light stuff. Like gasoline and all that. So what, how do we convert? We use chemical reactions with catalyst. And um, this catalyst will need to uh, operate in some conditions. And what the thing that can stop these catalysts from working are like things like vanadium, nickel, and calcium. Wait, vanadium, nickel, and copper. There are even other impurities in crude oil that will affect affect the catalyst activity and that you will need to know as well so such things are called catalyst poisons or they deactivate the catalyst and that that's why you need to know them so the other thing i want to talk about is the sweet or sour crude Sweetness or sourness of crude. Now this relates directly to the sulfur content. Because a this is a very, very important specification due to the environmental concerns of uh, crude oil and burning oil. Yes. So sweet and sour cr crudes. They relate to the sulfur content. And when you hear someone say a sweet crude, the sulfur content is very low usually lower than 0.5%. And when a sulfur content is higher than this number, usually it will need some kind of treatment process and we call that sour crudes. So let's go through a, an assay, an assay of Basra heavy, Basra heavy crude. And let's take a look at the kind of impurities we explored earlier. So first thing you want to know, the sulfur content. So this is Basra heavy. So sulfur content is like 3.8%, 3 3 roughly 3.8%. And we have a nitrogen content Nitrogen content of 1,800 1, ppm parts per million. This is a parts per million. And what else do we have? We have mercaptan sulfur. Mercaptan sulfur is the part of the part of the crude oil. The sulfur content of the crude oil that makes it stink. So how roughly how stinky or something like that. Yeah, how stinky it is. So that's about 123.9 ppm. So usually sulfur crudes, uh, high sulfur crudes will usually smell a lot worse due to all these uh, mercaptans. Mercaptans are like, if you know what alcohols are, mercaptans are these. These are mercaptans. So instead of the oxygen, you have the sulfur. All right, what else do we have? Salt. So 
we have 4.2 pounds per thousand barrels. So this is pounds per thousand barrels. This is a very standard measure of the amount of salt. Now how about the metals content? Metals content here. So we have vanadium, I'll just put V, 79.6 ppm. Oh, that looks like quite a lot. We have to do something to remove it. It says nickel. Nickel is at 20.6 ppm. And calcium at 4.5. So stuff like these can actually corrode or corrode your, your refinery, the pipes, the pipes in the refinery or the columns or the reactors and they can also act as catalyst poison or they can start fouling up your refinery. That means they form clocks. Let's say you have a pipe here, they can start forming clocks just like how cholesterol clogs up your arteries. So it's a similar idea. All right, so that's about it. These are the most important impurities that I want to talk about today. One of the most important, the few of most important ones. And I have two pieces of homework for you. Please post it in the comment section below. You can check your answers in the description. So what other impurities? What are impurities in crude oil can inhibit inhibit chemical reactions by deactivating the catalyst? So give three examples. Go do some research. Or if you really don't want to do, you can look at the answers. But I suggest, I suggest, I strongly suggest, go and do some research. <coughs> Excuse me. And since we talked about sweet and sour crudes, and the heaviness and lightness of crudes, give an example of a heavy sweet crude. So, I'll give you an example of light and sweet. That means low sulfur content, high API value, or low density. This is uh, the premium stuff, brand crude, or WTI. <coughs> These are light and sweet. Basra. Basra is known as... These are sour crudes. This bars are heavy. Sour crudes, because by definition we know 0.5% is about the threshold. And we know the sulfur weight percent is about 3.8. So this is a sour crude. And the API is around 24. So it's relatively heavy. So this is cheaper than this. Mainly for these two reasons. It's sour and it's heavy. High sulfur and lots of residue. So give me an example of a heavy sweet crude. Tell me its API value and sulfur weight, sulfur content. Post it in the comment section. You can check with the, your answers. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you have a good day.